We're live. I think we're live. Are yeah. We live? Okay. Yeah. We do this every, every time. Week. Every, every week. week. Are we live? This week? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, hello. Welcome, everyone, to Live at Epifan. It's Thursday, 3 o'clock Eastern. So you get uh, Double George today. That's right. Uh, every, every week we are here at 3 o'clock, and we talk about... Uh, video production, mostly live video production. We something do to do with streaming. Something to do with live streaming yeah. is usually the focus, so uh, stay tuned. We're going to do yeah. a big deep dive today into a very relevant topic. Well, we have a really good one today. We have uh, James from StreamShark joining us. We're going to bring him on in just a moment. Um, we've been talking about StreamShark the past couple of episodes a yeah. little bit, very briefly. Just because um, we wanted to go with the moniker of Shark Month. And yeah. we're like, what can we bring in? What about those StreamShark guys? Yeah, yeah. it's a great play. Uh, but we've, all, we've also been using their service yeah, that's why uh, we like for it. the shows <laughs> the past couple of weeks and experimenting with it, learning more about it. And to really fill in those blanks, we wanted to bring the real experts in so that you guys can learn more about what StreamShark's all about and what they do. Mm -hmm. But we were going to start with um, maybe quickly looking at... Well, even before that, why, why don't you tell so. people, give me the, the, the pitch. Give me the 30-second pitch. pitch. What is StreamShark? Well, I'll probably go more detail and let James do that from his perspective. But from my perspective, um, StreamShark offers an enterprise class CDN plus, if you will. And by CDN, I mean a content distribution right. network, a restreaming service, place to host uh, live streams, schedule live streaming events, mm -hmm. and so on. But the tools they have there really make it super powerful from even a, a lower level content creator right. all the way up into the high level enterprise power users. Yeah. And, and they do have some very interesting clients that would be in that group. And yeah. Yeah. we're using it for our show today to do yeah. our stream. So we send everything up to StreamShark and we let StreamShark handle the dirty yeah. work of pushing it out to the different platforms. Exactly. I think we do all of our metadata there as well, right? Yeah, we can. you can do just about anything. I mean, oh, that's yeah. the real beauty yeah, of okay. it. And so we're going to dive deeper into that. Um, but I think the other thing is there's a lot of platforms out there that can do this restreaming. Yes. But some of them are kind of complicated. Or super basic in that they're yeah, there's limiting and huge ways. Right. This, this thing, like, it seems like they thought of all the corner cases and the problems that you're actually going to run exactly. into and tried to fix them. Yeah, and so for me, from a user perspective, to get things quickly set up, quickly running, yes. but also having super advanced tools, StreamShark seems to cover all those bases. Yeah, it's like and the pro that, version of all these kind of crappy ones. Yeah. yeah. Not crappy. I shouldn't say that. They're just, <laughs> they're low in features and stuff. Some uh, are. I'm monitoring chat here. We see Ratnax on here and some other people are watching. So make sure you say hello. Uh, let us know you're watching. And if you have any questions during the show, we'll answer them. Um, yeah. I'm going to be on the sidelines for a lot of the show while George and James, the CEO of StreamShark, have their chat. But uh, I'll make sure that we uh, get your comments out. Yeah. <clears throat> we have Marco and Faithful yeah. Mess, faithful yeah. mess. Yeah, I, I missed that, that was the uh, last time too. So, so uh, <laughs> yeah, nice to see everybody here. And uh, why don't you give a super quick tour of the StreamShark UI yeah. so people know what we're talking about. Yeah, so Cameron, if we bring up uh, my laptop share here, I'm going to just very quickly do a little bit of a graphical tour of the UI for StreamShark. So when you have a StreamShark account, you get obviously their full sort of dashboard interface. It includes things like your you know, monthly plan stuff so you can track your usage, yeah. uh, which is a super handy tool. There's some platforms out there that don't have even this, which seems crazy to me. Like yeah. if any paper use service should have an easy way to track it, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So theirs is super easy, super clear. Got it. We have a little bit more of a specialized demonstration account, so it doesn't really give us much feedback here. But oh, okay, cool. if a normal account <laughs> would give us a little <laughs> more info there. Yeah. But there's lots of sections here for like streaming events, which is one of the things that we're doing right now. And some of the things you can do is really cool here. When you create a whole bunch of different elements to it, they have something called the workflow within a live stream event. And you can create assets for pre-event and post-event and switch between those states with your main event in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you can have your encoder running in the background, pushing everything up to StreamShark, in our case, we're using our Perl to have either images or video clips or, or HTML-based sources as pre- and post-event assets. That's cool. And be able to move between them in the cloud. Got it. Um, and, I mean, that seems like something, oh, yeah, you could do that on a switcher. You could, but this, um, it, it just makes it a little simpler. Sure. Um, it helps yeah. streamline that process. And, again, it means that once your encoder is running, you kind of don't have to touch it. You could, you could do some of this in yeah. the cloud and a yeah. little more straightforward. 
they have a full video on demand library part if you want to do that. Quick ad hoc live streaming. And then for us as Epifan, one of the most interesting things that they offer is the ability to manage encoders. And I actually didn't set this up <laughs> with our Pearl in this case. Yeah. We have been playing with it and it is super cool. But you can add a managed encoder through StreamShark, including something like a Pearl 2, and it integrates with our API and lets you push or pull different settings for that encoder That's from cool. their interface. And so it can help automate an encoder. Yeah, and right. that can be a great tool. Once that's there, it also makes it even easier to set up their events because you yeah. just say, I'm going to use this encoder mm -hmm. today, and, and bang, there it is. Everything becomes kind of automated, which is super, super cool. And you don't see a lot of platforms offering that. A lot of it's a lot more manual control. Yeah partly because they expect people to be using software-based encoders. Got it. And so this is a great a great piece. So that's sort of a quick overview there. Cool. Um, well, we'll get James to, d to dive a little bit deeper into some of this exactly. stuff and talk about why people are using it and who's using it and why we're calling it enterprise. Like, they're definitely different from the other platforms. We've, For sure. We've talked about a lot in the show. Yeah. Uh, we've got lots of people watching, Carter and Stephen and Henry and Stefan. So nice to see everybody here. Great. Um, like I said, put your questions in the chat. Uh, like us, subscribe, do all that stuff. All those uh, things. <laughs> yeah, we like that. <clears throat> um, should we bring in our guest? Yeah. So without further ado, we'll bring James in here. See you later, and, everybody. Uh, I'll Jordan be here. Duck but you out won't of the see side me. here. So yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> all right. Welcome, James. Welcome. Oh, oh. Thanks for having me, um, yeah. George. It's really fantastic to be on the show today. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. And uh, of course, you know, this is. Uh, a little bit of a struggle for you. It, you're down in Australia, so it's uh, pretty That's right. early where you are. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice, nice, bright and early start. But uh, you know, no, nothing I'm, I'm not used to. Uh, we've got customers all over the world, so we're, we're pretty used to, to catering for all these different time zones. <clears throat> Yeah, well, that's fantastic. So we wanted to sort of kick off with some of the basic questions, like, what is StreamShark, and sort of where, where do you come from in terms of you know the starting and the beginning of StreamShark? Absolutely, yeah. So I'll just you, you've touched on some of the, the really fantastic highlights of the product, but but yeah, StreamShark itself, uh, it's a full stack end to end live streaming service for what we call can't fail live events and. You know, you can be a, a massive enterprise or, or just a, an, you know, just starting out as an entry level user. But I think the overriding thing is, is folks don't want their live streams to fail. And we've really built, uh, engineered the product ar around those principles to make sure it's as reliable as possible uh, at, at every step in the live streaming chain. So um, it's a workflow. It's a turnkey SaaS uh, service for live streaming from source to play out. So. Um, you know, we take the mindset that it's it's not just enough to to run a cloud-based service and say send your live stream here and ex expect success. Right. Um, we're sort of deeply invested in every every part of the of the tool chain um, from from source to uh, play out um, to end users. Yeah, and that's one of the things I've definitely been impressed with is that it's not trying to just be one thing; it's trying to be a, a big end-to-end -end solution. And you don't see that a lot with uh, with a lot of a, a lot of those platforms out there. So where did the idea come from? Did you find that there was a hole in the market that needed filled, or was it just uh, something more than that? Yeah, I mean, uh, we've been around quite a while now. Um, you, you touched on CDN. Our heritage actually was a CDN company, and, and we just found that more and more people were using the, the video aspect of our product, and we started building out the, the on-demand aspect of the product, and then you know, getting into live streaming. Um, and we started working with some, some really, really large enterprises, um, in, in the US sort of, you know, titans of tech, your, your, your unicorns and so on, uh, and started working with their live event ops team and, and, and got a feel for what the challenges that these operators were, were facing on a day-to-day -day basis when they're, they're trying to do their job, execute these live streams, handle the streaming part, but also, you know, all the other complexities around signal flow, uh, encoder and, and uplink. And that really, I guess, motivated the, the development of, of what we know now as a StreamShark and the StreamShark event system, the whole workflow as well. Um, and, and, and motivated us to, to look at all the different pieces of the chain, um, enforce our best practices, and, and really help um, the operators do their job better uh, and let them focus on the, on the high-value tasks of, of executing a live stream. Yeah, absolutely. So I know uh, in some cases Epifan and StreamShark have some, uh, some shared customers that we're not supposed to name and we won't, uh, but aside from that, who do you find are, are typically some of your 
I guess, normal day-to-day -day customers that you find? Are they all large enterprises or some of them somewhere in between, medium-sized? Yeah, it's, it's a real mix. Um, you know, we, we, we got, you know, there's certainly some, some mutual customers that, that we know and love uh, that we can't name here, unfortunately. Um, we have some smaller customers as well, but I think the, the use is, is, is fairly similar in that, you know, a small team um, wanting to reliably go live to, to their audience. Um, so in the case of a, of a, of a small team or, or a company, um, you know, that can be internal content. It can be, you know, all hands, town halls, sales meetings and kickoffs. Um, so there's that, that strong enterprise or corporate use case that we deal with, and we have a lot of tooling um, built around, um, you know, reliably getting that stream to their uh, employees um, and, and also protecting that content. But then on the, the, other, the other side of the spectrum, um, you know, we have major public live streams. Right. Um, these are sort of mega scale or massive scale, um, and, and that's another sort of use case we're really tuned into where, um, you know, they need to reach massive global audiences. They need to reach, reach them reliably. Um, whether it's through our uh, sort of native white label platform or even social platforms as well to just maximize the reach and, and get to those audiences, you know, where they hang out, whether it's Facebook right. or YouTube or other social platforms. Well, that actually plays right into a question we were getting from, I, I think it was Stefan in our chat here. He was saying, what platforms can StreamShark stream to? Um, and from yeah. what I've seen, it could be pretty much anything. Pretty much anything. So we... we we focused on, on where we can uh, really deep native API support um, to really unlock the power of these platforms. So we've got native API support for uh, Facebook, for YouTube, uh, for Periscope, uh, for Twitch, um, just to name a few. Um, more recently, we've, we've added support um, for streaming to Steam. So if you're a game publisher, you can stream to Steam inside the Steam uh, product. Uh, and then we have that custom target, which really unlocks pretty much any streaming platform uh, that can take an RTMP input, which is pretty much pretty much any streaming platform out there. So there's right. a huge amount of flexibility there in terms of um, you know doing one to many fan out type streams, um, and that just reduces the network load as well for guys running these streams. They send it once to us, uh, and then we syndicate that out to all these different platforms. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things, obviously, for us that's important is, is I was kind of touching on briefly there was like the encoder management side. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that aspect of it, but maybe more specifically about how it interacts with Epifan Pearl uh, and our yeah. family of encoders. You bet. Um, so, so yeah, that, I guess that was something that that's, we've developed over the last couple of years. And again, you know, we've developed out the our streaming event platform. It was getting quite mature, and we were still seeing some pain points with, with operators around, you know, keying in the settings wrong. Um, you know, having to do a whole lot of manual work every time they wanted to run a live stream. So yeah. um, we were really keen to do these deep a API integrations with um, hardware encoder manufacturers, and, and uh, EpiFan Pearl is a great example of that. So you can onboard an EpiFan Pearl 1 or 2 uh, onto StreamShark. You just give us some details about the box. Uh, we sort of onboard it, and once you've done that, it's, it's super easy to actually use that as a live video source. Right. So basically that just sort of comes up as an input inside the StreamShark product. Uh, where you create an event, you pick your input, that could be a Pearl, uh, Pearl box sitting in your conference room or at a conference venue. Uh, you select it, um, you can control the, all the, the important parameters around you know, quality of contribution and, and, uh, and other, other aspects. And then it's really the, then becomes sort of a, a, you know, a zero, zero touch or super low touch management in terms of actually starting streams, stopping streams, unlinking, linking to new events and so on. Which is definitely something I think overall within the the streaming uh, ecosphere that that's that's the way things tend to be moving as well. More things cloud based, more things as low touch as possible. Um, is that something that you get a lot of feedback from your customers? And maybe what are some of the number one feature requests you get from from your customers? Is that sort of yeah, absolutely, that? yeah. So I think it's just making it as frictionless as possible and, and just reducing the. The, the propensity of, of errors during the live setup phase, um, because you know we, we we work with stream operators. They're our, our AV Tech. They're our number one customer, and they're dealing with so much stuff uh, in the lead up to the live event. And the streaming, you know, is just a part of it. Um, you know, they might be setting up the mixer, getting the audio levels right, uh, and just you know, the easier that we can make their job, the, the better um, it is for us. So that's that's really what we've tailored the the solution around. And in terms of you know things that might be coming down the pipe. Um, you know, we're developing that that um, integration out, uh, particularly with Epifan. We're doing some really uh, exciting stuff around, you know, managing the layouts as well. So being able to, you know, do do some um, cloud-based switching, um, you know, set up your layouts ahead of time, 
uh, and then have that that real finite control about the the show flow and um and again, you know, with the focus around skipping sort of manual steps and, and having to set these up uh, on the pearl itself. Yeah, so we've got a couple questions coming in here. Uh, one from Marco just saying, does StreamShark offer an integrated chat solution? Um, and I know the answer to that is yes. <laughs> it's a, it's yes. an optional yes, thing you to bet. turn on. Um, yes. Now, is there a way to aggregate chat from the other platforms into StreamShark? Yes, and we, and we do that. So we have our native platform, StreamShark. You can think of it as a, a bit of a white label platform that any customer can come and brand uh, how they like. Uh, and then through that social um, syndication or restreaming, obviously you're going out to Facebook and, and YouTube and the like, and, and people can comment there as well. And um, what we then become in that, that sort of mode is a, a bit of a clearinghouse for, for comment um, aggregation and, and moderation. So we give you a single control plane uh, that lets you see comments from, you know, people might comment on StreamShark directly, people might comment on YouTube or, or Facebook, and we can pull them all together. Um, a moderator can moderate those comments, and then we actually have a teleprompter interface as well. So in a, an right. example of a show like this, yeah. um, you know, the moderator can be picking the interesting questions, and we have a teleprompter view uh, that can be shown to the, the presenter, and they can start answering, you know, hey, someone from YouTube's asked this question, someone from Facebook's asked that question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's a really, really powerful feature. We actually didn't set that up uh, for today's show, but it was something I wanted to play with uh, during our later shows as we learn more about the StreamShark platform because I was very excited to see that presenter view to be able to to break that yeah. out and, and be able to, yeah. to do that because it, it's a great tool. And again, that's the importance of these API integrations is being able to pull mm. all these different pieces together in, a, in an easy-to-use way. So there was another uh, question coming in here. Um, this one's a pretty interesting one. Uh, Race TV Live, who, uh, who joins us quite frequently on this show, uh, they have a stream of full days of motorsport, uh, and they need to switch the feed from different Facebook accounts for each race series. Can this be done mm -hmm. easily? From what I've seen, when you create those live stream events, you can create different you know, destinations and just enable and disable them as you need. Um, and that looks like it's pretty straightforward from what I've seen. That's correct, yeah. So you can set up the event ahead of time. That can be your sort of persistent stream that you can push to for a long period of time. Uh, then you just jump to, jump into our restreaming tab and just set up um, all those different targets as needed, and they can individually uh, be start uh, started and, and stopped um, as needed. So that we can definitely cater for that use case. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's one of the the, the great parts about it is that you could just have that list of restreaming destinations and just yeah. click the on off as as yeah. you need it, and, and that makes it super easy. Um, yeah, it's very powerful. You can do batch operations if you wanted to everything in lockstep, or you can get, get fine grain, get really granular and, um, and, and start them and stop them individually. Right. So I'm going to have uh, another question here from Stefan. Do you have to hand over control of your account, and by that I assume he means his social media account, um, to StreamShark to use these features? Um, and I don't believe you do. It's just sort of uh, an API click-through. Yeah, that's a, that's a really excellent question, um, and, and that's, that definitely speaks to, I guess, um, some some important um, enhancements that, uh, or developments that, that we've done that I don't believe a lot of other folks are doing. So uh, when you add Restream targets um, inside the, the product, um, we have that native API integration. You'll see a list of pages, profiles, groups that you're an admin on, and you can add them directly. Uh, quite often in, in this game, um, you know, we're working with big clients, maybe their VIPs, a big band, um, a head of state, a, a president, a prime minister, they don't necessarily want to give you admin to um, their social accounts, which is right. fair enough. Um, so we've actually built some really sophisticated tooling around that where you can remotely request access um, to a particular page or profile on these different social platforms. Um, that gives you time-limited access just for the purposes of executing a live stream um, uh, and, and, and essentially nothing else. So right. um, it, there's an email flow there where you could send uh, a request to you know the the, the, P, the EA or, or whoever it is that that maintains access to a particular person or, mm -hmm. or brand's uh, social account. They can grant that time limited access, and you just have access in the in the platform just for the purposes of executing the stream. And then that can be removed after the fact. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So that definitely helps uh, quite a bit. So I think. Um, the other thing we wanted to do with you, we sometimes do on this show that can be a lot of fun, um, is our, our sort of our bucket of fun here. Um, so we uh, we actually asked some of our staff to throw some questions in the bucket, and uh, we awesome. kind of just threw some things in here. We're going to try and do this in a rapid fire way. Uh, George has a timer here that we're going to try and do these questions. I'm not even sure exactly how many there are in here. We're going to try and get through as many as we can in two minutes. Um, so. 
want to do this kind of just off the top of your head on whatever these subjects might be, just to get your quick thoughts on them. So hey, wait, wait, wait. Sounds good. Well, wait, wait, well. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm, ready. I'm ready. That's it. <laughs> Go. All right. First one is protocols. HLS Dash thoughts. Uh, I, I still love Dash. Um, sorry, I still, I probably, I still prefer HLS. Um, okay. Just because it's so human readable. That's my hot take. Right. <laughs> That's a pretty good one, and that actually, that yep. those ones probably warrant larger conversations in terms of roadmap they do. for platforms. I, I, I can elaborate, <laughs> but I know this is rapid fire. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite streaming oops story that you've come across from yourselves or customers? Um, damn. I mean, yeah, the, the, the streams can and do fail. Um, we've had, we've had cables kicked out. We've had power cords kicked out. We've had homemade audio cables used, yeah, uh, that totally basically. ruined streams. We've, yeah. we've seen everything. Yeah. Um, so I could, I could, that could be another hour long show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in your opinion, could you name a creator that you feel is pushing the boundaries and streaming and where it's going forward in, in general? Ooh, I, I, that's a tough one. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not super on the UGC side. I mean, right. I think, you know, the, probably a lot of the innovation is happening on the gaming side, just in terms of the, the audiences that they're, they're building up. So, you know, Ninja, PewDiePie, those sort of guys are obviously right. the, the most notable. Right. Um, yeah, but, but that's probably don't have a huge amount of insight on that side. So this one's a little bit more personal. What got you into this business? Um, wow, uh, that's another hard one to answer quickly. Um, I, I basically wanted to democratize uh, access to high quality content delivery services uh, because they were hugely enough. expensive when we started. <laughs> Noble yep. and close enough. Um, if you yep. had to choose one streaming software package, which is your fave? 10 Ooh. seconds. OBS. OBS is great. OBS. OBS. Yeah, that's open, open source. They're, they're doing amazing work. Feature-wise, if you had to pick one platform, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Mixer, which and why? Uh, I'd say Facebook. Uh, just it because of the rich API. Now. All yeah. right. And that's the end of our timer there. We, well, had a we did have a couple of questions come in over chat. Though. All right. We'll go back very to the chat questions. ones here. Oh, very, okay. very serious questions. This one's re this is the most serious question I think we've ever had on this show. Is James willing to grow a beard? <laughs> Man. From our friend um, Craig Randall. I believe Craig brought up uh, beards last week when he mentioned if he had to grow one, and we said yes. So. Okay. <laughs> you know, so it is. Uh, it's November here. I don't know if you have that. Yep. Over there as well, raising yep. money for, for great causes uh, around men's health. Um, I was asked. Uh, I'm happy to donate, but I just, I can't do it. I have a, like a ginger, I have a ginger pirate beard and okay. it just gets you itchy know, as hell. That's so wrong with that. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I try to avoid that actually. I'm, no, yeah, we, we I, have a couple I'd of staff. I'd love to, are... I'd love to, but I, it would be super uncomfortable. We have a couple of staff that are participating in, in Movember fundraisers and, mm. uh, and they're doing pretty well with it. But, uh, yep. yeah, it's, yep. uh, it's I'll leave that, I'll leave that to our, you know, we, we have better guys here that, that, that can pull that off. <laughs> Well, for us, it's now winter here, so we need to grow beards just to stay warm. So, you know, it's, it, this is Canada after all. Yeah. Um, yeah. SJC Media said, um, why can't we get the Epifan Pearl 2 in Australia? Uh, you can. Uh, we actually have a you reseller can. partner in Australia. Um, the guys That's at Stream correct. Shark know them pretty well. Um, and we do have them listed on our Where to Buy page on Epifan.com as well. Um, so uh, we can definitely get you connected with that. If you want to send us a quick email to info at epifan.com, we can make sure our sales teams get you connected um, with our, our partner down there. Absolutely, they're great. Brian Taylor, uh, can I use this with Webcaster? Currently, no. Um, you know, as we've been opening up this sort of platform-oriented API for the Webcaster, obviously, you know, StreamShark is one of the names that we've uh, been talking to, but currently, no, and maybe that's something that we can uh, find a way to resolve in the future. But uh, currently, um, again, partly because I guess the target of StreamShark and, and some of the uh, certain models within the Epifan line, kind of targeting things above where the webcaster is, looking more at the larger enterprise um, and, and the same type of customers that might be buying, you know, the Pearls um, and, and StreamShark together. And just to add to that, I mean, I expect we'll support the mini um, shortly yeah. as well. Yeah, it, that's really easy because all the Pearl APIs are basically the same. So <laughs> I think it, I think it, I think you could actually just add one right now, but we will add you know yeah, a, a label there for the some mini. Some finer details. Yeah. 
So I think that's all our uh, chat from quest, uh, questions from chat at the moment. Um, so definitely, um, you know, there's some great ones in there. If you guys have any more questions, please throw them into chat and we'll uh, get to those. But um, that's pretty much the list that I had. We should have done a three minute for my bucket here, actually. Let's have a couple questions left. Leftovers. I might actually look at a couple of these here. Um, ah, that one I don't like. How about this one? Well, this one's good. This, see, this would have been a better preface for and one of the There's a couple more coming questions. in on chat that are... Um, but how much of your personal entertainment is coming from live streaming now, and, and what are some of the, the subjects or, or creators that you find yourself watching, and, and where do you see this going in the future? Um, again, a good question. I mean, I, I probably, I watch a little bit of Twitch, I would say, not, not a huge amount. I'm, I, I like to game, but I'm, I'm a terrible gamer. Um, so I try to get a few tips where I can. Uh, that's, that seems to be where the, uh, the, the, the big drive is at the moment. I think, you know, the other trend that we see is, is this concept of co-watching, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, people are getting together on, on social platforms, you know, to watch, you know, either, either content that is live that's being that's uh, happening right now or, or just some sort of premiered content that might right. be pre-recorded. Um, so we definitely see that as a, a, as a really strong trend and, you know, just a continuation of, of the interactivity uh, aspect of, of, of the live streaming experience is, is, is the other thing that we see, um, you know, happening, happening quite a lot where, you know, a big part of the, the experience is actually interacting with the creators, yeah. uh, you know, being, being featured on their streams, you know, you know, getting, getting, you know, feeling like you're, you're part of it. Um, you know, that's, that seems to be the, the, the trend that's, that's really captivating people right now. Yeah, absolutely. So there was another question from chat I wanted to get to here. Two more. Um, let's see. So there's two. Um, one from Craig Randall saying, does StreamShark have offices around the world or are you just based in Australia? Uh, I, we, we, we're a global company. Um, so we, ha we have actually m the majority of our customers are, are, are not here. Um, <laughs> so we, we, um, you know, we, we support them 24-7. Uh, but the, you know, the the primary team, the engineering team, is, is based in Australia, um, and and you know we we support a global audience, we support a global customer base from here. So we're right. you know we're trying to be a, an ex Australian success story, and uh, uh, you know try, trying to reach the world from our our, our little home here. Absolutely. Um, so another question was, uh, does StreamShark have functionality for failover to a backup stream? And I believe I did see that in there. With yes. That. Yes. Um, I, I, that's a fantastic question. Yes, you bet. So um, that's that's a huge part of, of what we do and, and, and our ethos around live streaming. So we support primaries and backups. Uh, we, we have failover uh, for primaries and backups. We have multiple CDNs. We have multiple DNS providers. Um, pretty much every step of the chain, uh, you know, there's, there's fail safes and failovers. Um, and even, you know, for specific social networks that support it as well, uh, we support failover for them too. So uh, we have failover on Facebook Live. We have failover on YouTube as well. So if you're using our redundant um, ingest, um, you'll also get uh, you know, an additional level of reliability on those social platforms. And some of them actually even support uh, forced failover as well, which right. is a, a really unique thing that we support. Yeah, yeah, those are definitely important. Um, there's one, a couple coming in here as well. Um, some for us. So SJC Media... Um, that one, you absolutely should be able to get the webcaster in Australia. So maybe, again, please send us an email just to info at epifan.com and uh, we'll get you tied in with our sales team to figure that out. Um, Stefan was just asking, um, can you add platforms you do not currently support on demand, such as IGTV or strange vertical formats on some platforms? Um, that one's interesting. So, Stefan, if you remember from our show when we talked about IGTV, they don't do live currently. Um, they only do uh, a, a VOD thing. So um, maybe that'll change someday. But I guess to that question is, you know, can you add platforms to StreamShark on demand? I guess right now that would primarily just be through generic RTMP um, to another platform, provided they support it. That's right. Um, yeah. So through that that custom stream target, you can we can go to a lot of uh, additional platforms that we don't have native API support for. Um, you know, often you know we've definitely had a use case in the past where they might want to send it to clipping services like Grabio, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's a, you know we've certainly seen that use case happen quite a lot. Or you know th even third party CDNs. Right. Um, so there's a huge amount of flexibility um, in terms of, of, of being able to, to fan out to different platforms, even if we don't natively support them. So here's a great question uh, coming in as well. Why the name StreamShark? 
Um, so once upon a time, we were called MetaCDN. Actually, the, 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 the parent company is still called MetaCDN. Um, we just, it was very literal, descriptive name. Uh, we wanted something a bit more fun that reflected our, our personality and you know, perhaps our background here in Australia. We have a lot of sharks. Yeah. A lot of people get eaten by sharks, unfortunately. Um, so we just wanted something that was a bit more fun, a bit more visually interesting, um, that we could trademark, importantly, uh, as well. Um, so, so yeah, that was, I guess, the, some of the reasoning why we, we chose that name. We, we, we had a really hard think on a, on a Friday afternoon after going to the pub and, and came up with that. That's where the best ideas come from, for sure. Yeah. So, well, it's certainly a memorable name and, uh, you know, definitely works really well. So, James, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're going to probably wrap me. it up here in a few minutes. So, uh, But if we need to uh, have our customers get in touch with StreamShark, I assume they can find you on all the typical social things. Absolutely. Yep, StreamShark.io. They can find us on Facebook, uh, on uh, Twitter, on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, we're, we're very easy to find. Just just Google the name and you'll find us. Perfect. Thanks so much, James. And uh, Thank hopefully you for enjoy me. what should be becoming in summer down there for you guys now, right? Yes. Well, Perfect. I'm very much looking forward to it. Good. Have a good one then. Right. Thanks, James. Thank you so much. Bye. All right. So George back in with me here, yeah. man in the chat. Yeah. Some that good questions great. in there, actually. Yeah, right. no, no, it's a, it's a cool service. I'm glad people are into it. Yeah. So I was just trying to pull up the calendar to remember next week's show. Yeah. What are you talking about next week? You I, never know. You just <laughs> show up here, right? I just show up five minutes before we go on air and yeah. get to it. But, uh, yes, Perrier is still a thing for anyone curious. Uh, yeah, so we'll be back here regardless <laughs> Thursday at 3 o'clock. It might be our Facebook. Uh, we have a show that we're going to do about the secret features of Facebook Live. So there's oh. lots of kind of weird, like, 18 level deep features that you can use in Facebook Live really? when you're doing a live stream. Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> probably both. Watch the show. You don't love it. Any more than three of these. Um, but that sounds interesting. Yeah. yeah. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. I think this will be a show uh, uh, from our friends Marta and Phil. So okay. that's Great. probably why you don't know about it. They can go down the street and get Zuck on, that's the, on right. the street yeah, right in there and get him Zuck. to answer that question. Yeah. 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 So anyway, we'll be back here Thursday at 3 o'clock next week. Thanks for watching. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next week. Yeah. Thanks.